All right, going to take a minute or two here to answer this letter from Poland. Um, it says, Dear Brother Brian, I'm a friend in Christ from Middle Europe, Poland to be exact. I've discovered your ministry by researching the Texas Receptus controversy, and I agree that King James Bible is the Word of God, and the new versions are in fact perverse, but I'm not of a KJV-only position, mainly since that would exclude me from using the good old Polish translations 17th century. Well, I can't speak for all people that hold to the King James-only position, but I will say that that's kind of a misrepresentation of those that are King James Bible-believing. Uh, I don't say that you can't have a translation in another language or something like that, or that there weren't other translations that preceded the King James Bible, the authorized version of 1611. Uh, there were other translations, and they're fine to use and whatever, but God's special hand of um, blessing is upon the King James Bible, like unlike any other Bible out there. Um, so I'm not against people having other, you know, language translations of the same Receptus type of King James type of, you know, text. In fact, a lot of the King James Bible comes from foreign language translations. Uh, some of the old ancient language translations were used by the translators from 1604 to 1611. So anyway, I'm writing concerning the matter of the state of your spirit. I do not fully agree with you doctrinally. For example, I do not believe in the concept of going to hell, heaven, after dying. Okay, um, we read this the other day. Uh, okay, um, you don't agree. Uh, I don't believe in the concept of going to hell or heaven after dying. Well, then what in the world is the point? Okay, if there is no eternity, what are you doing messing around with religion? If I didn't believe in heaven or hell and afterlife, um, I wouldn't waste 10 seconds with the Bible or with anything else, whatever. What's the point? Go on out and live like an animal and do whatever you want and, and just go have fun your whole life. <laughs> you know? Of course, that leads to folly and whatever else. You just you realize that you, know, you become very unhappy. Look at any celebrity out there. They're doing drugs and stuff because they're not finding happiness in things. But the whole point is, why are you writing to me if you don't believe in heaven or hell? Well, that's kind of messed up. I'll just read a scripture to you here. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you be, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Resurrection, in other words. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. <coughs> the resurrection is a comfort. But if there is no heaven or hell, what are, we, what are you being resurrected for? Life again on this earth or something? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> Go on over here quick. Show you another verse. Um, <clears throat> uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? You know? Um, <clears throat> but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. <laughs> There's no eternity. It's vain. What are we wasting our time for? Verse 15, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if... So be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, ye are your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are we are of all men most miserable. Can you read plain scriptures there? To this person here in Poland. I mean, it would be a miserable thing. To think there's nothing after this life. There's no eternity. What a miserable, miserable way to live your life. You need to get saved. I'll tell you that right now. If you don't believe in eternity, 
you're lost. It's just as simple as that. And I mean, what are you believe, doing t trying to rebuke me and tell me about the scriptures and whatever else if you don't even believe in heaven or hell? I mean, what in the world? But let's go to the scripture here. It says, John chapter 5, verses 28 through 29 wouldn't make sense. So let's go there. John chapter 5. We'll go through these scriptures. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Okay, um, I do not believe in the concept of going to hell, heaven after dying. Uh, okay, um, then what do you think the verses are that you just quoted there? That you put in, you know, this wouldn't make sense. Wouldn't make much, much sense. Yeah, wouldn't make sense. Uh, the resurrection of the just, uh, resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of, of damnation. Heaven and hell. What do you think that is? I mean, I don't know if this is maybe lost and you just didn't write this correctly or whatever, but it looks pretty, you know, plain to me. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 29 and verse 34 says there it wouldn't make sense either. Acts chapter 2, verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Well, then he didn't come up, right? Uh, no, I believe the Old Testament saints came up, went up to be with the Lord there. You know, the, the, you know the, at, in uh, Matthew chapter 28, where the uh, graves opened and many of the saints which slept arose and went out into the holy city and things. And, you know, there's some debate back and forth. When do the Old Testament saints come up? When do they get their resurrection bodies and whatever else? But this this passage here is not saying that there is no heaven or hell. I mean, you've got to ignore countless scriptures to make that argument. And that's not what's being said there. <clears throat> Verse 34. For David has not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. Okay, what's being said there is David's not saying, I'm the one sitting on the Lord's right hand. All right, it's not saying that he's dead and in the ground and he just is no more. That's not what's being said there. David is giving a prophecy not about himself sitting on the right hand of God, but about Jesus Christ. That's what's going on there. It doesn't prove that there's no heaven or hell. And if you believe that there's no heaven or hell, then what is the point of writing to a ministry? What is the point of pretending that you're a Christian? Very warped. Job 14. We'll go back to the Old Testament here. Non-dispensational. What a surprise. Job chapter 14. <clears throat> Surprised they didn't go to Ecclesiastes. It's another one that the heretics would like to go to. Job chapter 14, verses 12 and 21. So man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. It's talking about reincarnation, in other words. It's not talking about resurrection of going to heaven or hell. It's talking about when you die, you're dead, you don't get a second chance at life. That's what it's talking about there. Verse 21. His sons uh, come to honor, and he knoweth it not, and they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. Again, you're talking about you die in this life, you're not going to get a chance to come back, or you're dead, you're not going to care about what people are doing on the earth. Your time on earth is over. That's what it's talking about. doesn't mean that there's no resurrection. I mean, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. You're denying Jesus Christ by saying that there is no heaven or hell. How weird. John chapter 17, verse 13, here he has written that as well. If I wait, the grave is mine house. I have made my bed in the darkness. Well, yet you die and you get buried. That doesn't mean that there's no heaven or hell. And just, just you know, I'm sure people are going to say, oh, you know, prove it that he's even said this. Well, there you go. Okay, I just read all this right in here. Right here, you see it there. All right, there's the letter. But let me continue here. Um, and I don't believe pork is clean now. If Jesus would make it clean, why would Peter knowingly refuse to eat it in Acts chapter 10? <laughs> because Peter's a Jew. And he's saying, not so, Lord. I'm, you know, I've never eaten anything unclean. And again, you just kind of skip what is going on there. 
you know, let's just pretend that, that, uh, yeah, let's see where's the, um, okay, verse 14, uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 14, but Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. There he's refusing it. Keep reading, okay? New concept, I guess, for you, but, uh, and the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vestal was received up again into heaven. <coughs> okay? So, Peter, yeah, he refused, but the Lord's saying, not so. He corrected him. And as far as, uh, <clears throat> is it now clean to eat? Well, again, you turn to other scriptures. You don't just cherry pick a verse of scripture and not compare it with anything else that's going on. 1 Timothy chapter <clears throat> 4. Now the Spirit speaketh, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Is, port a, is pork a meat? Yes. <clears throat> which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature, except pork, no, it says every creature, of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Sorry, you failed again there. <clears throat> Jesus simply pointed that it's ridiculous to worry if your hands are clean if you're a sinner. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? <sighs> but anyway, I'm not writing regarding this. What I want to say is, dear brother, we're not brothers. Okay, we're not brothers. Right? No possible way that you're saved. Um, in your videos, I have seen a tendency of yours to be quite temperamental at times. Yes, because of people like you. Lost people that try to pretend that they're Christians. I mean, you're, you're no different than an atheist. An atheist does not believe in, in eternity. They don't believe in an afterlife. They don't believe in judgment to come. You're the same. <clears throat> I think the way you present certain facts and opinions are not in accord with the way a Christian should act. You're not a Christian. Who are you to judge me on that? You're not saved. Sure, the Lord speaks with wrath at times, but knowing He's almighty, we have to understand that with our carnal nature, we cannot possibly make a positive assessment of whether our anger is justified. Yes, we can. We have a Bible. He that is spiritual judgeth all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about that. Yes, I can judge things. Yes, I can get angry. <clears throat> yes, anger is certainly justified when you're mad about the wicked prospering about teaching false doctrine about people mocking our god not our god you're not you're not saved but brother we're not brother when these kind of people see you angry they will strengthen themselves in their steadfastness they will be assured you're the victim and they're the winner and this is not the case remember that the fruits of the spirit are love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance that's the image we should be depicting I agree we should rebuke others and not allow for false doctrine, but in a loving spirit. Brother, have you considered that perhaps through this condescending behavior you could have possibly drawn yourself away from God's grace? You mean I'm lost? <laughs> I place condescending in quotation marks since I do not want it to sound like an insult. <laughs> okay. So for you to judge me for being condescending, you have to be condescending yourself. Welcome to the cuckoo bird nest here. Um, this one's great. I love this one. This is one of my favorites ever I've heard. I, am just, I just am concerned that you might have been rebuking the Holy Ghost by inhibiting his fruits as lately they are not shown in your video. <laughs> oh, boy. If, you know, I'm not going to say if I had a dollar, you know, I'd be rich or whatever every time I heard this because people say I'm covetous or something. <laughs> but uh, lately your videos have been very mean and you don't smile as much as you should. And I used, I like your old stuff, but your new stuff. And I'm going, have you, you're just a liar. You're a total liar. You go back the whole way through. I've always been very blunt and brutally honest and very insulting many times. You know, and I, I struggle with that. I struggle with pride. There have been times I've gone too far. I'll readily admit that. 
years. I really used to like your old stuff, but you just lately you just seem so unloving. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I, but the whole time I'm rebuking these false prophets, or I'm being condescending. I'm I'm actually attacking the Holy Ghost. Never realized that. I never knew. If anything I wrote offends you in any way, brother, I surely do apologize. We're not brothers. That is not my intention. If you wish to discuss doctrine, I would be very happy to. How can I discuss doctrine with somebody that doesn't even believe in heaven or hell? But here's, you say, what is this guy? I especially would like to encourage you to give a try to our Seventh-day Adventist eschatology as we identify Roman papacy as the little horn of Daniel 7, thus opening Revelation in a wonderful way. I thought Jesus opens it. Oh, that's right. That was some devil-possessed woman, Mary Baker Eddy. She opens it. Yeah, I don't think so. Which beautifully sheds light on the mark of the beast and many other things being involved with the Catholic Church and the times we live in, in perfect accord and harmony with the Old Testament. And that's very important, to me at least. <laughs> if you're interested in that, I would recommend Walter Veith's Total Onslaught series. It, it's a long one, but brother, assuredly, whether you will believe what he says or not, he has done some astonishing research in exposing the evil of the Catholic Church and the origin of paganism. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I don't know anything about the Catholic Church. I've never talked about them. You know, I, I need to be educated by a Seventh-day Adventist that's lost. But yet we're brothers. For your ministries, I would highly recommend giving a try to Walter Veith's lectures on the New Age Bibles, namely Battle of the Bibles. It contains a wonderful index of changes made in the newer versions that will be surely handy for you. Also, David Daniels from Chick Publications, he's not a Seventh-day Adventist, um, has done great work in debunking the evil of the critical text. It's mostly found on YouTube. I think these sources may cause your ministry to greatly profit. Um, yeah, I would love a, re a response with your thoughts while you're getting it right now. Um, so... I will be praying for the grace of our Lord Jesus for you so that you will be able to discern between the truth and lies. And may it be with you and your family even so. Amen. May God wonderfully bless you, dear brother. Why is God wonderfully blessing me? I'm wrong in all these different areas and I'm condescending and I'm attacking. I'm rebuking the Holy Ghost, but God's going to bless me. Okay. Um, friend, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, if you're watching this, there's a good chance that you're possessed with devils. Um, I don't think you can get this messed up just with fleshly things. Uh, you need to get saved. All right? Um, and you need to get far, far away from the Seventh-day Adventists. They are a satanic cult. Let me repeat that. They are a satanic cult. Let me say it one more time. The Seventh-day Adventists are a satanic cult. I've seen some of Walter Veith's stuff, and he puts out some good information, whatever else, and, and I agree with some of the stuff he says. But I don't, I don't think he's a saved man. And I probably said he was in the past and whatever else, but I've seen more evidence and things, and you start to go, uh-oh, uh you know. I mean, if he's saved, the Lord's going to get him out of the Seventh-day Adventist cult. Seventh-day Adventist is, is, is a satanic cult. Sabbath-keeping works salvationists is what they are. They don't really even keep the Sabbath, too, by the way, but that's another issue. Um, please get saved. All right? If you're you know, truly serious about wanting to know Jesus Christ, understand that there is a coming judgment and it will affect whether you go to heaven or hell. All right. Um, and that I realize when you die, you don't have to go. You're not going to stand at the great white throne judgment immediately at death. That happens later. But what I'm saying is you will be judged and you will be spending eternity in one of two places, heaven or hell. Yes, they do exist. And you have to ignore all kinds of scriptures to try and, and try and twist scriptures that are not talking at all about, you know, eternity and things. Um, and what is the point? I mean, what really is the point? I just, I can't get over this. What is the point of writing to a Christian ministry if you don't believe in heaven or hell? If there is no eternity, why are you wasting your time with the Bible? Why are you wasting your time with anything to do with God or whatever else if there's no eternity? What's the point? So, I had a brother write to me years and years ago. Um, I think he was from Sweden, and he said, Brother, he said, I believe God has given you a talent for drawing in nuts. Um, the weirdest, craziest people seem to gravitate towards this ministry. <laughs> mm. 
I think so too. Uh, I certainly don't want for it. I want that. I, I didn't ask for that, but it just seems to be there, you know. Uh, you know, you're my brother in Christ, but I don't believe that there is a heaven or hell. <laughs> okay, all right, sure, whatever. Um, so that's going to be it. Uh, please get saved to the guy that wrote the letter there. I guess guy, I think it is. Um, so, and, and uh, for those of you out there that faithfully support this ministry, thank you. Um, and um, just want to say something here. I recently said, you know, some of the brethren told me that I sh should do this, and that is uh, just telling everybody out there, if you don't know, I do have a Patreon page, and I keep the monthly fee thing very low. The reason I created Patreon is because I can have better control there than I can here on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of really good conversations back and forth. If trolls try to sneak in or heretics or whatever else, I can kick them out much easier than I can on YouTube where you can just create new accounts all the time. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of good times on, on uh, Patreon, over at the Patreon page. And, uh, you know, so a way to support this ministry, uh, I mean, $5 a month, that's, that's the lowest thing that you can, you know, I think some people even do $1 a month or whatever else. So uh, if you're interested in that, go on over to Patreon. Uh, I keep the comments section closed on almost all of the videos here just simply because of the strife and everything else. I've talked about that in other videos. Um, so if you just want to, you know, if you want to check out Patreon, go ahead, go on over. If you don't want to, that's fine too. So I uh, just thought I'd say that and um, just uh, please pray for the ministry. Thank you to those that support the ministry and we will see you in the next video.